the Visual Workshop for Excel Unit B. We begin with a blank spreadsheet and then we will start by typing in the title in A1. That's Expense Analysis. Then I'm going to come down to row 4 and I want to put the months of the year in. So I can just start with January, go back to that cell, use the fill handle, and then I can fill that down through December. Right underneath that I'm going to put the word total. And then in row 3 I'm going to put my column headings. District 1, and total. And moving to B4, I'll go ahead and type the numbers in. And I'm going to shut the video off for a minute until I get that typing done. Okay, I have everything typed in, and one of the first ways that you'll want to check and make sure you didn't make any typographical errors here is to uh, insert a sum. So I'm going to hit the sum button, make sure it's including all the columns or in all the rows, and uh, let's see that matches the textbook. And then I can fill that across using the fill handle. Now this is actually only showing one decimal and so is this, and these are actually rounding. So if I widen this column a little bit, you will see that you will match the textbook there. Now here we want to do the same thing. We want to calculate a sum across the row, so what's the sum of January? And then we'll use our fill handle and fill that down. Okay, next we'll move along to this bottom portion. So in cell, let's see, it looks like it's 18, row 18A, we're going to type in a constant, a number that we're going to use, 0.5. And then underneath that, we're going to calculate an increase and a total. So we're going to take the total in row 16 and multiply it times this constant, times 0.5, and see what that increase is. And then we're going to add the increase to the total, and that will be our new total. So we'll start with equal. We'll take our total for through December, and we're going to multiply that times the constant in A18. So our formula is equal B6 times A18. So that's our increase of, I'm sorry, 50%, 0.5 is 50%. And then we're going to add those two numbers together. So we'll add our original total to our increase, or B16 plus B19. And then the result is $25,808. Again, I need to widen this column just a little bit to allow the two decimals to show. Now, it would, it would seem that it would be nice to be able to use your fill handle and to fill this across, but you'll see that it doesn't work at all, so I'm going to click the undo button and explain why not. This constant that's here in this cell does not change, so when I copy a formula that refers to it, that formula gets changed as it's copied. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make the reference to A18 absolute. Absolute means we're going to add dollar signs before and after the column letter, and that will keep it from changing. So I'm going to go up into my formula bar here, and I'm going to put my cursor in the middle of A18. I'm going to press the F4 function key. The F4 function key will put dollar signs before the column letter and before the row number. And then I want to do um, uh, the copy again. And when I do, actually I went too far, let me erase those. And then when I do, you should see that the numbers should match here as they do in the textbook. Okay, last thing that we want to do is insert a header. So if we go to Page Layout, hit the More button, go to Headers and Footers, and do a custom header. They want our name in the right margin. And of course, when we print preview, we'll be able to see that. They don't want us to show grid lines. So I'm going to go to the um, View button, the View tab up here. And then you'll see a place under View where you can turn on and off grid lines. So I'm going to turn off the grid lines. And you can see how that looks. And let's go to a file, Print. And you can see 
how it looks. It's a little small to read, but this is how it looks laying out on the page, which I think, which I think is perfectly okay. So you could go ahead and print a copy. And then we want to do a save as, and we're going to save this as EXB expense analysis, Excel, B, Excel unit B folder. And we're going to call it EXB hyphen expense And that's the end of the video.